<laughs> hey everybody and welcome to yet another VR chat avatar creation tutorial with double goose your host or whatever you want to call it it's been a moment I know I've promised everybody that I was going to do this and I haven't done it yet but uh here it is uh finally so we're gonna go ahead and talk about kit bashing models so this is basically we're, we're getting ready to t transition from intermediate to the advanced portion of avatar creation so kit bashing is basically taking a model that you like and then taking another model that you like and combining the two pieces like for example clothing armor pieces things along those lines now in order to properly do a decent kit bash we don't want to do this in unity we want to do this in blender in this case or another 3d software program that you might use in my case i use blender so Follow along with me in Blender, and if you have another program that you use, then watch another tutorial, because I don't really use 3ds Max. I have it, but I don't really know how to use it. But uh, anyways, <clears throat> so in order to properly do kit bashing and things along those lines, we'll need to at least know some of the basics of Blender itself, how to manipulate shapes and things along those lines, so we can get that down, and then we can figure out how to manipulate pieces and things like that to proportionate to the model that we're using, because... Not all, say, giant pieces are going to fit on a miniature character or something related to that. So we're just going to go ahead and go over some of the basics. Manipulation. The objects. So we're going to go ahead and manipulate this square. So as you can see, we have a square. This is everything that opens up in the defaults of Blender. We're going to delete our camera. We don't need that. We're going to delete our light. We don't need that. We're going to move on over here to our square. Our square. Yes. So yes, we have a square. So there's a couple things we can do with this square. We can move it around with our transformation manipulator. We can move it with our other transformation manipulator, the one that allows us to rotate it on the X, Y, and Z axis. You can click on the greens and the blues to rotate it on those particular positions. Control Z, Control -Z of course, undoes everything. We have this one that manipulates the size proportions. That is X, Y, and Z axis. We can use Control Z to get that back. We have, after that, we have our, of course, switching over to edit mode. We're going to press tab. Boop. We're now in edit mode. Edit mode by default. You'll see all these little dealy dupes at the edge of each corner of your squares. That is your vertice select. We can go ahead and select a vertice. Oh, we can go ahead and, oh, by the way, shift F to kind of get this WASD movement going on. And WASD movement is nice because first person shooters, strategy, I don't know, whatever, most video games nowadays pretty much use WASD keys. It's kind of nice to have that little bit of formality. Also with Blender, right click is key. You're pretty much gonna right click everything. There is a setting in Blender that allows you to do left clicking on stuff, but from what I've heard, I don't use it myself, but from what I've heard, uh, it can mess some things up. So don't use it. And if you are someone who does use it that way, then good for you. Or if you figure out what that, like, yeah, I just took a shower. Eh, okay. Anyways. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and basically with the vertice select, you can click on a vertice, any vertice. You can press shift to click on multiple vertices. Uh, once we click on a vertice, you can go ahead and up down to manipulate the size and air location of the shape, things along the, or that vertice, things along those lines, Control Z to make that back. Of course, we can select multiple vertices at once, and you'll notice when we select multiple different vertices at once, it highlights the face. And with that being said, we're gonna move over to, f well, let's move down the aisle. We're gonna move on to edge select. Edge select allows us to select the edges of the shape. So the edge here, we can stretch out that edge, click on this, we can stretch out that edge, and look at what we just did. We made a trapezoid. <laughs> It's a trap. <laughs> okay, anyways, control Z to make that go back. Uh, and of course, shift to select multiple of the trapezoid, or <laughs> multiple of the um, edge select edges there. And you'll notice, of course, once again, when we select all four edges of the square or cube, it selects the face, which then leads us over to face select. Face select allows us to select each face of the object there. We select like, so this face, stretch it out. Like that face, stretch it out. Select a vertice, stretch a vertice out, select an edge, select an edge, I mean, stretch an edge out. Boom, we're done. Let's say the shape's too big, we need it to be smaller, so we, we, we can, while in edit mode, edit mode is going to be pretty much for all editing of shapes and things along those lines, 
We want to select this whole thing. We want to shrink it. So I like to do most of the... I, have to, I like to do a lot of my editing in face select, mainly because I like to be able to select a face. And then press A twice. Boop, boop. And then I've selected the whole thing. Like the entire face. And if you ever want to go and do the, the see-through things, you press Z. You can see through stuff. X-ray vision. Be careful with that. Dangerous. X-ray vision's dangerous. Okay, anyways, we're going to go ahead and shrink that. Press S to scale. Up, down. 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 And if we go down too far, it reverses it. Up and down on it. Boop. That's scaling, everybody. S. S is for scale. S for scale. Shift F for WASD. And if you want to move around, if you want to move faster, faster shift while in WSD, just like a first person shooter or whatever for running. And if you ever want to slow down how fast you're moving around, move your scroll your mouse wheel down, scroll your mouse wheel up. Scroll it down, scroll it up, down and up, and down and up, and down and up, and down and up. See, just like that. Magic. Okie dokie. So I think that pretty much does it for the basics of manipulating the location, things along those lines. On edit mode, I'm going to flick back on over here to object mode by pressing tab. And if you'll notice, the origin, the point of origin for our odd shape is now over here because that was the original point of the origin before we started moving it around to edit, edit mode. So in object mode, if you want the point of origin to be centered around our shape, we can go over here to the top, to the left area here, where it says Set Origin on our Tools tab. Set Origin, Origin to Geometry. Or, whoops, uh, I was Shift Z if you ever want to know how to go into render mode real quick. Um, <laughs> set Origin, Geometry to Origin. Or, sorry, whoop, Geometry to Origin. Origin to Geometry. Geometry to Origin. Origin geometry. Make sense? Yes? Good. And then you can origin to 3D cursor. If you say you click your 3D cursor, this is your 3D cursor right here, this guy right here. If you you can you can set the origin to go to your 3D cursor. Now the origin is over there. I like pretty much most of the time for me, I'm just origin geometry. Pretty much what I'm using most of the time. I got a Superman flip going on here. Um <laughs> So anyway, so let's go over to our modifiers. So let me go ahead and delete this. Boop, get rid of that. Create. You can create all these basic shapes right here in our creation tab. Uh, I mostly use cubes. You can actually make a lot of things with cubes. Cubes, cylinders, and I don't actually ever use a sphere. Okay, here's why. Here's why I don't use a sphere. Uh, the, the UV sphere. That's about 960 tries. That's almost 1,000. Delete that. Cube, 12. And then we go over here to our modifiers. Add modifier. Subdivision surface, boom. It's a, it's a sphere. And then view two, boom. It's a sphere. And that's only almost, that's only 200 tries. And then if I apply that, I can go over here to tools. I don't really like all these polygons, or maybe you do. Maybe you like the polygons to show, but I don't really like my polygons to show on my spheres if I'm doing something specific. Eh, sometimes they do. It depends on the model I'm working on. But in this case, we're going to smooth them out. Boom. S top left, smooth, flat, smooth, flat, smooth. What this does is this basically just takes the, the edges and kind of smooths them out there without increasing your polygon count. It's still 192. Didn't increase it at all, just for looks. If we press, t if we press tab to shift on over to uh, edit mode, it still shows our individual sections there. So yeah, there's that. That's probably one of the more handy portions of the. Blah, blah, blah. What, that's one of the. That's one of the more common modifiers you're going to be using. And by the way, modifiers is this little wrench here on our right. So if you want to flip on over to modifier, click on your wrench. Add a modifier. They're all here. So outside of outside of the uh, the subdivisions resurface, which is one of the more common ones you're probably going to be using, 
One of the other more common ones we're going to be using is the mirror tool. So I'm going to go ahead and press tab here. I'm going to go ahead and delete half of this shape. So I'm going to press Z to go into our X-ray vision. Press B to select multiple vertices at once. So we can click and drag with our left click. We're clicking and dragging half of this section. Boom, just select half of it. I'm going to delete it. I press X to delete. I'm going to go ahead and delete the faces. Boom, gone. You can also delete the vertices and it'll delete a little bit more because it's, it's getting over here for the vertices and you can delete the edges. But in this case, I just want to delete these faces on the left side. So we're going to just delete faces. Boom, X, delete. Boom, half of it is gone. So now I'll go back over here to uh, object mode by pressing tab. And now we have half of it missing. Whoop, it's gone. We're going to go over here to our modifier, go to mirror, mirror. there it is. And we're going to go ahead and, uh, which one is Y? Yep, there we go. Select the Y axis. You can also select the X and the Z axis for it to mirror on that. Or you can also mirror all three at once. We're not going to need to in this particular case. And what the mirror does by default is it mirrors from the point of origin. Uh, or if you have another object in the scene, let's, let's go ahead and add one here real quick. For example purposes, we'll just add a cube. This guy right here. We'll put the cube right over here. If we have another object in the scene, we can tell it to mirror from that object. So now it's mirroring from the center point of this cube. So now if I move it back, boop, move it from the center point of that cube. And so what, let me go ahead and delete that. And so it just moves it back to default. And now what we had to do, if we could go over here to edit mode by clicking tab, any vertice we select, if we move it, it moves it on that side. And now we have cat or alien style ears. And now we have we it, flat, we have we stretch out we have I, I don't know what that is it's some kind of weird design you'd probably find from a Nintendo 64 game I don't know it's it's the new and improved Pac-Man ladies and gentlemen it's Quagman I don't know move that back um. And yeah, you can also set the verge limit, basically how close it start begins to merge the uh, the sections here from the center point of the mirrored portion inwards. Uh, defaults are usually fine. You don't really need to adjust that very often. Sometimes you do. Uh, if you do need to adjust it, it's right there. Just slide it up, slide it down, press the numbers, diddly doop. Got it. You know what to do. All right, so let's say we delete a face. So we're going to delete a singular face here because we're making like a helmet or something like that, or we're editing, say, a helmet. This is also like basic, just basics in um, modeling at this point, but we'll say we want to create a helmet. So we're going to go ahead and press X on our sphere here, and we're going to press delete that face. Boop. Oh, whoops. Delete the face. Boop. It's gone. It also deleted the face on the other side, of course, because mirroring um so there's that and here's the thing so inside so what so blender the outside is going to be show up as a solid object but on the inside you're going to be able to see through this you're going to see through this and you're going to see the environment entirety on the back side because the normals on that side are set not to show any imaging any of that thing of that nature so you'll notice sometimes in VR chat or something like that, when you look at the mo a model, uh, let's say you look underneath the helmet, a helmet, or you look on inside of something, something you're normally not supposed to be able to see, you'll notice it's hollow, empty, and you can see right through them to the other side of the world. But whenever you're looking straight at them, it looks like a normal 3D model. That's because the model itself is set only to display information from the front end, not from the back, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So we want, to, we want to make it so that way the inside of this is seen so that way it represents the outside. So basically, we're not seeing through it. It's a solid object. It's not see-through or whatever. It's not x-ray vision. So we're going to add another modifier here. We're going to add solidify. Boop! Now, on the inside, is going to pretty much be just solid, just like the outside is. So you could put a head inside of that or something like that and make this some kind of weird cat alien helmet thing <laughs> and we can also adjust the thickness how thick it is on the inside and we can even adjust if we want it to be super thick on the outside 
Make sure, of course, whenever you're done using any form of your modifiers, apply them. Boom. And you can't apply them in edit mode, just like it says there. I always make that mistake. So I got to go to tab, back to object mode, and apply it. And now if we go back into edit mode, you'll notice that the inside of our sphere also has its own unique set of faces apart from the outside. So we can actually manipulate these faces from the inside here, and it won't really affect what's being displayed on the outside. The more you know. So, yeah, there's that. And of course, apply the mirror. Not can't do it in edit mode. Apply the mirror, and boom. Now we can start editing this side outside of that side there. And that kind of does it for the basics of, mo of modeling uh, shapes, at least in Blender. You can add spheres, cones. Oh, you can add a monkey. Look, we got a monkey. <laughs> you, can, you can model this monkey. You can manipulate this monkey. You can make a real fucked up looking monkey. <laughs> Look at that. That's a, it's a basic shape, ladies and gentlemen. Monkeys are. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm having too much fun. I'm distracting myself with this dumb monkey. Okay. Yeah, delete that. Eh. B. Bloop. Delete it. Boop. We deleted more than we wanted to. B. Deloop. Boop. Boop. There is, oh! Something else handy here. So, let's say we only want to delete this particular section of, uh, of, of our model, or a model. Uh, if we press Control L, Blender will only select the portions of that model that are attached by the vertices. So this particular model isn't attached to this model's vertices at all. Uh, so if I go ahead and press just delete, it's only going to delete that particular section. Let's say this model, if you want to attach the vertices of a model to, an, or, or to another section, let's say we want to attach these two ears together, so that way they're kind of, instead of part like this, they're like this. Alt M at first, boop, puts it over there. Alt M at center, puts them in the middle. We can also do the same with the faces on the inside, of course. Alt M puts it in the center. Alt M at the cursor, wherever your 3D cursor's at, etc. You get the point. And then we can also do some tad has these to the center of that back there. Look at that. Now we've got. I don't know what we got. It's some kind of some kind of weird thing. I deleted some faces I didn't want to delete. Delete that. Get rid of these. What do you want? What do you want from me? Shift. More. X. Gone. Boom. You now know the basics of modeling. You could take a you could take a donut. A Taurus. A Taurus a Ford Taurus donut. Flip it around. Shrink it. Move it. Dink it. Dub it. Fucking get over there. <laughs> Animate it. How many more? Look. Now we've got like... Now we got like a 3D... We got like an eyeball thing if we were to make like whatever more. This could be a head of some robot. You got it. You can figure it out. Yeah. This is, this is pretty much just the basics of 3D modeling at this particular point. Our next video uh, will be in regards to kit bashing in general. But this particular one's going to be just the basics of 3D modeling. Hope this was helpful. Get to work. Do the thing.